Welcome to SawCast. Today is a very special bonus episode because we have a special guest. If you listen to this show, then you'll know this guest as Victor from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. He also stars in AMC's new show, Dark Winds, a psychological thriller. You can watch the entire first season on AMC Plus right now. Uh, so our guest is Jeremiah Bitsui. First off, congratulations on the new role. Congratulations on being part of a, a couple of the greatest TV shows of all time. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me and, and uh, uh, drumming up so, so much support for Better Call Saul and, and all the other shows. Definitely. And uh, what I'd love to just jump into right off the bat is I've been going through a bunch of your previous interviews and I've heard bits and pieces of how your yeah. career got started. Uh, yeah. and how you kind of started out looking to direct and eventually sort of shifted into acting. But I would love to go even further back and just learn okay. a little bit about when did you first realize you wanted to get into film and TV and uh, how did you discover that? It, it, for me, it was, it was pretty young. I was, I was, um, uh, I was a young, I was a young kid and um, uh, I grew up on the res up until the age of 10 and um you know, my, my parents had a rodeo background. My dad is a bareback rider. Mom was a rail racer. And so mm. it was uh, a lot of that growing up. And I was I had bad allergies and I couldn't really do any of that. So um, I watched a lot of movies in the summer. And that was kind of my safe pastime. It wasn't like, um, you know, normal parents are like, get away from the TV or whatever. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it was like, no, go sit in front of the TV because we don't want to have to take you to the emergency room or or have some type of crazy bad reaction to um, just the environment. I make myself sound like a bubble boy, but um, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad, you know, during the summer. So, yeah, that's that's really how I, I got into it. It's just just watching a ton of movies and uh, uh, binge watching before there was the, the term. So, oh, wow. um, yeah. And and then I, I got into a Japanese kids film. That was my first real uh, production or project. And mm -hmm. then. And then it just inspired me. Like I, I could do this stuff at home. I could, I, I have the ability to use my parents' camcorder and shoot little videos. And, and now I had something to do indoor. So that was kind of, that's what kicked it off. And then I got my first like real legit project, which was natural born killers. Mm -hmm. And, um, started acting auditioning and and kind of that's how it, it kicked off for me and I, I knew at that point this is what i wanted to do with my life and back then when you were uh in those theaters what were the types of movies you were gravitating toward i've, like, I've heard you mentioned mm -hmm. before chill, chilling at home in front of the tv when when most kids were being told to go out and play right right <laughs> yeah yeah it was like the reverse so it was actually um the, you know, going to the theaters was was a luxury uh, just because we lived very rural mm -hmm. out on the res. And there was like a little um, they called it the rent a flick. And it was kind of like a, a little modular trailer with uh, with videos that, for rent. And um, I love ninja movies. And oh, um, cool. so yeah, that was kind of, you know, the, you remember like they had all these old school uh ninja flicks like american ninja american ninja one two might have went up to like five but they had all these different ninja films and um i don't know first i thought i wanted to be a ninja and then i, <laughs> I actually wanted to be an actor yeah uh victor is kind of ninja like sometimes creeping out of the shadows so yeah. maybe he has a little bit of training i, I do I think gus looks for ninja experience when he's collecting <laughs> resumes <laughs> yeah yeah, that's probably a requirement. Like, uh, Mike is the, uh, the super ninja. If he was using ninjas, there's no way Lalo would have walked out of his Hacienda alive. Yeah, you're right. There you <laughs> go. It would have been all on the roof, like running around. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, as I'd love to segue into uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Sure. Um, what was your reaction when you heard Better Call Saul was happening? I know as a fan, it was like, for us... I never dreamed that I would was, get more of that universe. That was one of the like yeah. the best things I'd heard in my life. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah. and for me, for me as well, like, just kind of, um, yeah. You know, I, I jumped into the show not knowing really what I was jumping into, mm -hmm. and it, it sounds crazy, but like, you know, because of what the show is now. But you know, they only had one season at the time, and so 
they were going into their second season and um, I was reading for Los Pollos Hermanos manager, which later became um, the role Cynthia uh, for Ash. Ashley is the actress who won the role. Mm-hmm. So as you could imagine, you know, that they kind of already had their mind and their heart set on it. And so when I walked in, I always tease Adam Bernstein because I'm like, you know, I tease him until the iPhone one came out, which it just did. And I tell him that's why he didn't really pay attention to my first audition. <laughs> but, um, you know, be as it may, it's, it's kind of like when you already, that was a learning experience for me because it was one, like um, being prepared, even though some actors, they, they really try to be prepared for cold reads, you know, and that, and rarely I, I have I ever saw anything like that happen but went in did the read for what became Cynthia obviously I didn't didn't get it but um Adam was kind of glazed over and I I could have just got frustrated and been like gave a halfway read but you know I, I, at that time I think I kind of already established no you're going in to do your thing that you do mm-hmm. doesn't matter if nobody's looking you, you're doing the thing so um cameras on and and they said action so you know um that was really it and then next thing you know um adam or sherry rhodes who rest in peace no longer alive she came out brought me back in and then it was the read for what became victor so i'm, I'm kind of giving that background because mm-hmm. um i had no really no idea what breaking bad was and then um uh, once i booked the role i went back and thought oh i better you know, watch what I'm going to be in. And then got kind of, I was into it. I was like, wow, this is actually a pretty cool show. And, uh, and then just as you guys remember, just the whole breaking bad phenomenon, it was just, it was crazy, you know? And in the last season, I think I watched every episode in a different city and um, with like at watch parties and then the finale. So it was like, a, I'm getting to the point where I'm saying like, it was very, um, the buildup was for me was like, I was on this wave and, you know, went from just being a guy who I thought maybe had just, you know, it was two or three lines, the first uh, episode. Mm-hmm. And then now I'm on this crazy train, right? And it's just like, it, it's nuts. And it's like, it's over. And then everyone's kind of like, wow, you know, what do you do? Where do we go from here? And then I'd never thought that I would, I don't know. I guess I never really, uh, I didn't see Victor being in that period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought him, cause he was a young guy. I thought him maybe being brought in towards the end of whatever they're serious mm-hmm. uh, with, with Saul. So, um, you know, I was excited of course, as a fan and, and then as an actor, I was super excited um, when they decided they were going to bring me in in the third season. So um yeah, it, it's but never would I imagine that I've done like more episodes on Saul than I would have on Breaking Bad. I, I couldn't have called that if I wanted to. Right. What is a uh, what is reading for Victor look like? Because he he's one of the the characters I can say who who's just in general in, in TV has had a lot of impact and is very recognizable. While also yeah. he doesn't say a lot. But everyone knows him. He's probably one of the most memorable, um, uh, like criminal, like kind of goon sort of like handlers in the in the show. Uh, I'm curious, what does the read for that look like? So the first, again, the first uh, first time I read it was like three or four pages reading for that Los Pueblos Hermanos manager yeah. um, dialogue back and forth. I think the scene was with Walt, mm-hmm. and then. Um, I almost felt like I got downgraded a little bit because I, I went out to the car. Um, crazy story. Like I got locked out of the place I was renting downtown Albuquerque. I got locked out of my truck. And so I had to use a VIP host at a nearby club that I would, that we do some industry events and things at. and he was all for it. The studio was new. And so he took me to the audition. So I was already kind of like feeling bad, like, oh, man, I'm sorry, man. I got it. They're calling me back in. And he was just like, no, 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 no. I'll stay. This is cool. This is, you know, 
he, he was just kind of soaking it all in. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, as long as you don't feel like I'm taking advantage. So I, when I went back in, I, I picked the lines up and it was just, you know, that first, um, the first episode, I still remember my lines. It was like, um, uh, you know, Victor right in the scene with Walt goes in, you know, um, uh, 38 pounds, $1.2 million truck stop 10 miles south and exit 25. I feel like I'll never forget <laughs> the full, like, you know, uh, and then he's like, wait, what? Uh, he's like, uh, uh, one hour, you know, be there. Mm-hmm. So anyways, when I read it, I remember just going into the restroom. I had like four minutes to prepare. There were all these big burly, you know, tough looking dudes. And so I just kind of went alone for myself and prepared in the restroom and, uh, and just thought of a few guys that I grew up with and then, and then thought of, um, and then just kind of created in my own head, you know, um, someone who just like absolutely wasn't playing and would be a nightmare at playing poker with like that, that kind of, you know, and and just taking everything out of his eyes, like Mm -hmm. any sparkle, anything, and just, and just saying the words. And that's how I ran it. And um, I didn't have time to prepare a lot with character or anything, but just more physicality. Mm-hmm. And and so when I went in, it was a different Adam Bernstein. And he was just like, Dude, he's like, yeah, that's, you know, he didn't say I got the part, but it was a whole different thing. Um, where then I walked into the lobby and I felt bad because I was like, now they're all going to get the iPhone one Adam Bernstein. Because <laughs> you know? it was a different, it was a different thing. So you know, you, you kind of know when, when you do something right, mm-hmm. doesn't always mean anything, but at least, you know, when, when you do, you done something right. Yeah. So I, I, you kind of hit the nail on the head in terms of just the, I think you'd probably agree with mm-hmm. me on this Gil. Like the, the perception I always had of Victor was he always knew more than he was letting on and almost took pleasure in it, which I think yeah. we see when he, uh, when he starts to prove, well, before, before a box cutter, yeah. He starts to show that he's actually learned how to cook. Like he's been sitting there watching right. and learning. Yeah. 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 And I think that like, you know, to his own, um, his own demise, like, of course he was, uh, he was called to, to the scene um, and probably passed his better judgment. He knew not to walk in that door, yeah. but you know, like they say, like Icarus, you know, flying too close to the sun. I think for him, it was all about trying to know more and have more of an edge mm-hmm. because he was so hungry to 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 be uh, closer and, and at the top. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but it's at the same time, I think maybe Gus recognized this is just a guy that wants to be on the top, like, mm-hmm. He's, you know, and I'm at the top and, you know, he, you know, good luck with that. So I think he also kind of recognized that ability to be um, someone that could easily turn, turn their back. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, once we went in further into uh, um, knowing Victor and then what helped was going into the backstory before Better Call Saul or before Breaking Bad with Better Call Saul you know, really thinking about um, his character and where is he at? Like in my head, I had to start, when did he start this job, you know, and how did the job start? And where is he, where is he progressing? What is he hopeful for? Is he happy with the job currently? Mm -hmm. Because we know that at the end of the fourth uh, or third season, uh, season three, he's not happy with the job, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's kind of building to that. And, you know, hopefully there's subtle things and hopefully I, I was able to accomplish that. You know? mm-hmm. I definitely think you were. And, and I think part of it is a lot of what you're describing, that you have this backstory and you've crafted this character that then you embody through those mannerisms and what you're saying. And I'm curious, that piece of it, how much of that is you kind of looking at the lines and crafting a story in your own mind, how much is it you working with Vince Gilligan, Peter Gould, the other writers, with them to say, well, where's Victor's head at at this point? Where did he come from? You know, why is he doing this? Yeah, yeah great question. I think, you know, they, we get a lot of liberty um, and 
you know, Peter and Vince are so great and they're so used to working with um, well-oiled partners and, and uh, technicians and everything else. And so they, it, it's, it's cool because they kind of just, not to say it in a bad way, but they kind of expect and just know that they're working with really good people, mm-hmm. you know? So um, they allow certain liberties and, and they kind of just, they keep it a cool open environment. It, it, I don't know. It, it, it would be what I would imagine working at Google somewhat would, you know, that just that open environment and being very, yeah, you know, let's check this out or I don't know, we'll try some, you know, it, it, it's that uh, from, or any, any corporation, I guess, maybe that has a great corporate culture. That's mm-hmm. really what their creative culture is like. So um it it would be weird to go tell Vince um hey can I do this you know um because he would be like oh yeah you know yeah Derek come on you like yeah you know but of course if it was very off the wall you know um I think you already kind of know when you're going to talk to Vince like you know you're 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 bringing things that are pretty well cooked, no pun intended, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you're bringing ideas that you've really, you've really stirred on and you know, that they're, you know, they're, they're going to be, you know, uh, it's a good idea, whatever it is. But, um, and the same thing with the other actors, you know, what one time and I, I, it's a risk because I was a new guy on the show, uh, still season three, and Brian Cranston, you know, had just won, um, I think he just won an Emmy and it was like, you know, so one of the, uh, one of the days we're on set and he comes up to me and grabs or what we do the scene and it just felt like something was missing. It felt like, like we were playing it and it's when we're in the super lab and he's, he's trying to ask, um, asking about, I think he was asking about, um, uh about jesse i believe but in the scene it it felt like there was there needed to be a little more tension and i remember walking in saying the lines doing it as we rehearsed it and then um you know in that sense like he's the lead he's he's running and gunning and he's you know he's, he's at the top of his game and so i just brought it up and just said hey you know Rather than asking for permission, I just said, hey, w- you know, would you mind like in the scene or maybe in a rehearsal real quick, if whatever works best, like, would you mind grabbing my arm? And uh, and he's like, yeah, you know, that, that, that's actually that's something good. So we tried it and it worked and it stuck and it fit. And and um, and I think I became more confident mm-hmm. in that and kind of just asking and being aware like of, OK, this is what's going on. And and this, there's something needed here. And, uh, so with that being said, I think Vince allows for that breeding ground for ideas, you know? And, um, and so it is more of like, Hey, can we try this? And that's a luxury that only on shows like Saul mm-hmm. that you have in, in Breaking Bad, because we do these sacred rehearsals. And I don't mean sacred, like you're putting candles around and all that, but it, sacred in a sense that it's like, okay, Everybody that doesn't need to be here, you know, thank you. And department heads peek around the corners. Actors are doing their thing. And they really keep that safe space so that we could feel it out. And it, and it doesn't, I've seen that done before, but maybe when it's like an intimacy scene or scenes where there's, mm. you know, they're, they're trying to protect the actors. But literally we're getting that before, before scenes. And it's just so, it, that that's so cool to have because you get to fill this out and they're allowing you to kind of set your marks. So they'll go back and they'll be like, okay, where, you know, where were you? you started, was it here? And then there, and then like, yeah, I stood here. And then, you know, I went back and I tied in at this table for a second. So all of the movement that you see mm-hmm. a lot of times it's, it's what's like the actors are actually creating, you know, it sounds what, like it lets you actually, kind of become the character and play yeah. it out the way you believe it should rather than have someone from the outside direct it in a sense. Exactly. And, and feeling the space out. So actually feeling the super lab with no one else in it. Mm-hmm. So it feels. 
and then backing into it and then saying, okay, then they bring in more technicians and then it all kind of folds in as we start doing more audition or more, um, uh, or we do more. And then it's pretty much, okay, guys, you know, uh, you guys feel good. Yeah. Feel good. Or, yeah. You feel good. Okay. Well, maybe let's go talk about this for a second or whatever side conversations kind of move off stand-ins roll in. And then, you know, that process, it, it I'm going to miss it because it's, it's not like that on every show that mm-hmm. you hit the nail. I mean, that's Gil and I lament this every, ep- every episode that we inch closer to the, to the end of better call Saul, we say, we don't know how we're going to watch TV after this because <laughs> there's so few, if any other shows that are made in this way. Uh, and what you're describing, it sounds like it, it's almost like the story and the specific actors movements are almost discovered rather than created. Uh, and so yeah. things progress so organically mm-hmm. and so in believably and intelligently, uh, that I'm going to miss it when it's gone. Uh, yeah. And, and I think we share the, like a similar feeling there. Yeah, no, truly me, me as well. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's sad to see it come to an end, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, at the same time, I just, you know, it, it's like, that's, it's invaluable, you know, mm-hmm. um, you, you touched on the part where I was, I was talking about getting into directing and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And that was the goal originally. Um, that's where I started out in, in kind of revisiting some of that, but that I learned so much from them and I couldn't ask for anything better. It's like, I wouldn't learn this. You don't learn these things in film school. You know, mm-hmm. you, you don't learn this in anywhere else I could think of, you know, except being in, in one of the, on one of the best sets ever. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about because, and I think you've already hit on a bunch of it. And I've seen in a couple of interviews where you kind of said, I never went to film school, but I got the best possible film school I could, you know, from Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould. So, uh, so I wanted to ask, you know, in that film school, what did you learn about how to make one of the greatest TV shows of all time? Uh, good, great question. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it all boils down to, uh, I keep wanting, I almost slip into some of my, my lines, uh, from breaking for some reason it's coming. I almost said simple, complicated, doesn't matter. Um, I know a million dollars, stuff. 25 months. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, the, uh, it, it, it really comes down to the, the, the creative culture. That's what I realized. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm taking with me. You know, um, you may have great ideas, um, but if you surround yourself with a creative team who's also not just creative but able to work commute in a in a community sense Mm -hmm. and you you then come up with the best ideas like you know so vince gilligan's amazing at creating story peter gold is amazing at they're both amazing at creating story you know, and from years of just being in these writers' rooms and being on set and seeing things play out, like they, even with all of that, you think that they would be more like, no, this is the way it's going to happen. And, you know, you, uh, good luck if you, you know, but that's not at all the, the way that they look at it is, yeah, like it was written this way, but, you know, what do you see? What do you think? What, um, that they're in no way thinking that their process and the creative process that they've already, that's been green lit in the mm-hmm. hours of writing, that that is just what's golden and what, what's staying on page and that they're not going to bend. Mm-hmm. They're open to all, you know, open to ideas. What is it? What are you thinking? You know, sure, let's try it. And those, and that's rare. And that just comes, I think, with, with seasoning and with time and mm-hmm. the luxury of, of, having a background of, of great shows and, and a network that believes in you, you know? Do you think, um, or did they ever mention anything explicitly about how they feel about the audience? It, because a, as you're describing this, like, it seems like they really respected the intelligence of the people they worked with and were always willing to hear them out and give them autonomy. Uh, yeah. Similarly, like, I feel like the, their shows respect my intelligence and and there's the whole adage show don't tell for example um yep. they trust me to pick up on details and reward me for doing it rather than say we don't trust you so let's just let me, I mean, let me spell it all out for you 
Yeah. And, and, and people are, yeah, you're a hundred percent right. And a lot of us are, I'd say the majority, everybody almost is a huge fan of the show and fanatic. And so mm. just how you as an audience catch things we have, um, and you never seen it like this, but intently like people gather around whatever monitors are set up watching intently and then talking being like and not even in the video village not even like but taking their job so serious and thinking wasn't it like uh 503 of breaking bad didn't we you know x y and z and it's like yeah that's a good yeah you know and then it goes and gets you know they bring it up to vince or whoever's directing mm -hmm. and it's like, you're right you know and this may be a sound guy like you know that's awesome. where where normally you know there, there's a feeling of of apprehension or oh man this is the show creator i can never go talk to this guy you know i'm not going to tell him that they're doing something incorrect they're going someone's figuring it out mm -hmm. but no i mean it's that feeling that like everyone can uh, there's there we're all contributing to the same cause and if someone you know catches something they'll bring it up so i think that's that's a difference as well yeah, it's it really resonates um, because before I listened to any of the behind the scenes stuff and was just watching as just a fan who loves the show, I think, wow, this Vince Gilligan guy has got to be a creative genius, must just walk into a room, know exactly what's like going to get done. Is that what yeah, an auteur, yeah. you know, yeah. like a Stanley Kubrick or something. And yeah. then I listened to the Insider podcast and I was like, wow, he is the most humble person I've ever heard. And he even admits, he talks about it all the time, how he was against the idea of incorporating Lalo into Better Call Saul. And he's like, I was wrong. He ended up being one of the, the best characters ever, you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and yeah, I mean, I think that's a part where he, he doesn't pick the mountain he's going to die on. Like, he doesn't, he, I, you know, you see it. You see it all around. And, and that's, that's the cool thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so there was one moment I wanted to ask you about on the show. So we were just talking. We about, were thinking. I was just thinking we got to ask about this. We were talking about paying attention to all the details and all the choices for how you say certain things. Yeah. And uh, in Better Call Saul, there is a, a Victor moment that we both loved and talked. We about talked about it at length on yeah. our on our podcast. <laughs> and I would love uh, to just yeah. hear your thoughts on it and if you remember the thinking that went into this choice. But it was uh, episode three of this season, the one where Nacho is killed. Um, so, uh, amazing episode. And there's a moment where you come into the room where Mike and Nacho are hanging out. Nacho's kind of having his final meal and you yep. tell Mike, you know, the boss says he's too pretty and you, you yep. offered, you want me to take care of it? And Mike's like, no, I'll do it myself. Get the hell out of yep. here. And then yeah. before you walk away, you get this little like smirk on your face, you get a little yep. smirk and then you yep. turn around and walk off. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, that, and that kind of ties back into uh that, that ties into the, the actual not to spoil it but the death scene of of um um uh, of nacho you know um and we can talk about that as well but yeah in in that scene the first time as it was written actually it's interesting you mentioned because um mike uh John, jonathan banks and i we were talking we were playing it out and he actually at first didn't really like you. And he's like, I don't know. doesn't feel, you know, and this is one of those things that we talk about, you know, right in the sacred rehearsal. And he's like, yeah, this, he works, we work together. Like, why am I going to talk to him? Like he's, you know, why am I going to talk down to him? Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, get the hell out of here. That just seems like, you know, so he, we, we played it a different, we played it a different way and we kind of played with it. And so one of the choices was very, um, you know, that, that I came in and it was kind of a little, a little harsh in the beginning and that that's what caused him like, okay, you know, like, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, blood in the water and there's a shark smelling blood. And, and he, he still, both of us were still like, nah, you know, it, it seemed a little too, a little too basic. And so then we played it the complete opposite and we played it um, kind of like, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, do you guys watch um, um, what's the name of that show? The, uh, um, oh God. 
uh, the serial killer, the actor, the serial killer. Um, I'm yep. thinking oh, Barry? That. Barry. Oh, Barry, Barry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, the, what's the actor's name? He's brilliant. Oh, Bill, Bill Hader. Hader. He has uh, uh, Bill Hader, but the um, the guy that has like, uh, he's completely bald. Oh, oh, oh Hank. 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 No, oh, Hank. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Name. I forget the actor's name, but. Hank, a, yeah. yeah, amazing actor. But, um, and actually, I think at, at the time, I think in my head, like I was thinking, like you know how he kind of walks in and he's like oh, so hey what's going on guys yeah. you want me to what do you want me to do you want me to shoot this guy you know i didn't play it to that extreme mm -hmm. but i kind of i you know kind of came in matter of fact like if i was about to go take a, a lunch break and it was like you know uh what do you want me to do you want me to you know you want me to beat on this guy what would you like and i kind of played it up a little bit and and uh and john liked it jb liked it, it but it it was like we it was a little bit too lighthearted for mm -hmm. the moment and so we peeled it back even a little bit more um but when i knew when we did that i kind of knew i was like he like he already knows what's the next step like mm -hmm. he knows and he knows what his involvement is in that next in that scene the next uh, what's going to happen the nacho so that was important for me, again, not scripted, but to tie that in, mm -hmm. that action in with uh, that, those two scenes and, and to kind of make that connection for, for my character. Oh, that's awesome. And, and by the way, the actor's name, Anthony Kerrigan. So uh, Anthony Kerrigan. Yeah. thank you, Anthony. You, you had no idea, but you had a, a little, almost a cameo in a, yeah. or a, an effect, at least, on Better Call Saul. Yeah, it, and it was it was more so like you know when you just get something kind of in your in your head. Mm -hmm. Of course, he, he he plays it brilliantly in a way that it's like it's it's a different show, you know, it's lighthearted, yeah, totally. dark. But um, but it, yeah, I, it, we just we played one just for fun like that. I remember, and it, it was kind of uh, just fun. I, you know that that's the one thing I'm gonna miss. I think is just allowing to have being able to to work with a group that's just like sure, let's try it, let's see what it is, you know. And I think you can get into these conversations where you're talking about what you're going to do or how that might be affected or what if. And I think that they realize that so much time is spent on that rather than let's just do it. Let's just shoot it and see what happens, you know? Yeah. And, and that really helps everyone. What's uh, what's the mood like on, uh, on set when you're shooting such a dark, uh, you know, tragic episode do, do you feel it the whole day or is it only when you're shooting those scenes or yeah, what, what does it feel like on the other side of the camera? Um, you mean like when for Victor's death? Uh, well for Victor's or, death or even the, uh, the nacho death episode where, you know, virtually every scene of that episode is like, man, I feel bad for him. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's, it's become, you know, it's, it's become a thing, uh, you know, where I think after, somewhere after my death and and somewhere in between i want to say my death and um and uh and mike's death i think they started giving out like cakes and making cakes for for people and <laughs> you know and um and so uh and then for for saul it was like a t-shirt like they would have like the um uh like they had a t-shirt that was created when when lalo and then you know team nacho and i think actually i have the t-shirt for nachos and it actually had a um um kind of like this 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 drippy salsa and it was, <laughs> with a, you know not i could i could show it but um i wish i had it on me right now but um yeah that's so i think you know trying to keep it lighthearted. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, everyone is seasoned enough to know like, okay, this guy's going through some things and thinking and, you know, just being aware. And there's a lot of the emotional intelligence that the crew has, you know, uh, where, where they're not just going to walk up and be like, hey, dude, hey, what's up, Michael? Let me, uh, you know, start talking BS. You know, it's like they know, okay, this is an important space, you know. Mm -hmm. Sort of reminds me of the, the episode of Malcolm in the Middle where, where the dad played by Brian Cranston's role in a perfect game in, in bowling. And he need, he needs to make sure no one comes up to him and talks to him or disturbs his, his ritual that he does before every strike. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, you know, it's like let the person focus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Uh, I wanted to ask if you had any other burning questions about Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad. I did have a couple questions about Dark Winds. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, cool. Oh. Um, so I, I guess first off, just as an introduction, because there's probably a lot of um, fans of uh, Better Call Saul who'll be listening to this. Uh, I've seen the first season of Dark Winds, but for the viewers, do you want to just give the you know 30 second pitch, just what the show is about and your role on it? Yeah, sure. So Tony Hillerman's series uh, set in the 70s, uh, 1971 is when Dark Winds is set. Navajo Nation, um, two officers, well, uh, follows a police department, K into police department, which is kind of uh, right outside the heart of Monument Valley. And um, just in case people don't know, Navajo Nation is 27,000 square miles. And at the time, you only had maybe 50 police officers. Uh, covering that area so um, heinous crimes are committed and uh, investigation starts regarding a murder and potential witchcraft that's going on within uh, connected to this murder so um, let's just say another character ends up being introduced to the police force um, just in the right amount of time that all this is happening when they need a hand and um and then from there, of course, the uh, the the tension and the mystery ensues. You know, who's who's the criminal? Who's who's the killer? Uh, and they know that it's within the community. So um, a lot more complicated than it is. Mm-hmm. But in the end, uh, I think our tagline was not everything is what it seems. Yeah. Yeah. And I can second that. Even the I kind of went in pretty cold, not knowing anything about it other than psychological crime thriller, I think. And so yeah. once, once I saw the witchcraft element, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I, I did not know that was going to be a part of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, um, you know, the book, of course, there's, there's liberties that, that um, uh, Chris and, and Bob, since they've been connected to it now for a while, and they've been trying to make this uh, for a number of years. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris, uh, Chris Ayer, the um, executive producer, he told me recently, like within the last year or so, like, hey, this thing's, you know, looking like it might actually happen. And I was like, okay, cool. So, uh, but for that to, to happen almost immediately, you know, within the same proximity that that we were, I was coming out of Saul mm-hmm. was, was serendipitous. So it was, it was cool. It was um, Awesome to step off. Literally, um, I think Vince was directing one of my last episodes. And so to kind of have that as bookends and then to jump on this one, which, which in its own, you know, it has its own um, aesthetic and its mm-hmm. own feel. And uh, yeah, I think I think I hope that it, it has a, a long journey and, and can have the same success uh, as, as Saul or Breaking Bad. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I heard it's already renewed for a second season, I believe. Renewed for a second season, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, the numbers of the first episode were really great. They were saying they weren't going to renew it potentially if they did until the end of the year. But um, I think it was around when the second episode aired that we already knew that we were, that we were getting renewed. Awesome. Uh, well, I know we've only got a couple minutes left, so I wanted to ask you. Sure. Uh, I, I binge-watched your uh, Breaking Dad series. Uh, And I know you talked about how part of what you wanted to do there is kind of show what does an actor do when they're not acting? Um, I'd love to just hear, you know, these days, what do you do when you're not acting? Uh, And I've heard bits and pieces about some of your entrepreneurial efforts, um, but we'd just love to hear, you know, a bit more about all that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, breaking that, we actually started right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, I think literally our our last uh, i think that was done january 2019 and then you know the world whole world kind of shut down after that uh so life before that was a lot of i was still traveling a ton um for for work for business and then you know had the whole you know family we just everyone we're all kind of bumping along so um now it's a lot different on the other side of the uh, the pandemic we've we've all been kind of come home bodies and um i don't know it, it's crazy to see because uh you know before my adult young adult life i was uh i'd travel a ton like mm-hmm. it wasn't uncommon that i would be uh, three or four cities within a week and then maybe out of the country at least once a month and so 
now to kind of be, um, you know, with the father of, of two and, and being like planning, like, you know, kind of like, I guess like everyone else does, like, you know, oh, you know, two months out, we're going to go X, Y, and Z. Before that used to seem so crazy to me. Like it would mm-hmm. be like, unless if it was business, I wouldn't know how I was going to, how, how I'd plan that. But, you know, now with kids, it's kind of like you have to coordinate all the details and where the animals are going to go and everything else. Um, so we're, we're easing back into um, to travel post pandemic and um, business. Uh, yes, yeah, still still focused on the contracting work, development work that I do. And uh, and then, you know, now starting to kind of get into um, uh, producing and directing as well. So that's that's pretty exciting, you know, because um, I think that's kind of like a marriage between the creative work I do in front of the screen and then the, the business side of, of development, construction and production are a lot alike. You know, mm-hmm. you kind of it, I'm so used to working like with ragtag, like uh folks that just live on the road you know mm-hmm. and and it, i kind of i'm really attracted to that work culture you know where people uh put an army together and you're working out in the middle of nowhere and you're you're you have a dream and you're putting it together so i think that's kind of that's uh that's a fabric of of where i find uh, uh most of my work it's mm-hmm. it, it's in somewhere in between you know doing uh uh working with a team and creating a vision. Mm-hmm. Well, and just hearing what your interests are now and, and what you see going forward for yourself. And even thinking back to what you described as a kid, realizing a lot of the things you liked doing in terms of making little movies and things like that, you could do yourself at home. Uh, it sounds like you're following a path that doesn't need a, the, someone's blessing necessarily, which I think means like, I think it's safe to say we can expect to see a lot of stuff from you in the future um, because it's something you want to do. And so it's going to happen. Yeah. 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 The the breaking dad stuff, we haven't really jumped back into that stuff Mm -hmm. yet, you know, but um, yeah, there's just such a demand for, for content, you know? So um, my manager is more like a writer producer, you know, recently sold the show uh, to ABC. And so, uh, he helps a lot in, in perspective of, of writing on that side. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking at projects and, you know, it is, it is about money in that sense. And so you do, you know, you do need blessing of, of investors and, uh, and banks and people that, you know, and, and, and people that are bringing their own talents, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of, a uh, blessing that has to be done in order for something to get done. But I think I'm in a more mature place in, in my career and in my age now that I think when I was younger, early twenties, you know, it, it's hard to have that type of uh, confidence and, and, and diligence as well. Cause I think it's also like, you're taking someone's money. You better have a pretty good idea of how you're going to, you know, what, what the plan is, or at least that you have a great creative team to accomplish something. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think the perspective is a lot different versus when I, I first started, you know. Well, I know uh, we're a couple minutes over, so I'll let you go. But I think I could speak for both of us when I say we're very excited to see. Uh, I can't wait to see what you produce, direct, just what comes from you. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. And um, when that stuff is happening, we'd love to have you back on to, to talk about it and um, see some of the behind the scenes to the extent you can, uh, you can discuss it. Yeah. And, this was uh, great. I would love to see the nacho shirt if <laughs> if you have the time. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Hold on one second. Uh, okay, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm you just because my dog's crazy. Okay, sure. sounds good. Yeah, good call. I meant yeah, to ask yeah. about the shirt, yeah. Should we say something now that we can use as our after, uh, <laughs> after the credits? <laughs> Well, this could be the first time this shirt's seen by the public. I know. Well, that's a, what I'm thinking. This is a Saul scoop right exclusive. Here. Yeah. Scoop. Oh, Saul hey. Said, nice. <laughs> we should tell him that joke. I bet I like it.
and he's all nervous as he's searching around yeah. like oh I'm making them wait oh god this is like walter when he's like looking for uh the money the cash yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the cross face right now <laughs> losing his where's money. the shirt <laughs> we'll tell him that one too yeah we actually got quite a bit of swag this um this season so i'll just kind of show you oh awesome um so this year oh yeah. Cinnabon. nice yeah, Cinnabon. not Cinnabon. not to brag but gil and i did make jean costumes for the uh premiere last season oh they featured wow. full Cinnabon Cinnabon uh costume yeah, yeah he ironed on the labels awesome. and everything yeah oh awesome man awesome. <laughs> but that, that looks that looks uh legit yeah yeah they gave us a little cinnabon cup and then with the thank you season six uh, and this was actually from the sound department um and actually one of the sound guys was on our, our dark winds crew as well um with liberty mahalo all uh better call saw final season so you can see this little, wow, this that's little. cool sweet and uh, and i learned not to actually use them because i had a really cool beaker uh mm -hmm. coffee mug mm -hmm. from breaking bad that um, brian gave out one year as as uh, uh one of the crew gifts and um i was busy showing it off and thinking you know drinking out of it all the time and then uh one day i was like cleaning my desk and i brushed it off the the, oh um, no! The desk, and we had concrete floors, so they had, had like no chance. Um, let's see. Here's another one. So this was. Let's see. Here's another another shirt. Oh, that's a oh, cool one. That's cool, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, this this might break your heart from the last. Oh man! Oh. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah, that's that's cool. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, Palm Coast sprinklers. Watering your world since 1978. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then let's see here. And then, of course, this is the uh, 603. Okay, this is the one. This is the one. Oh, man. See, and <laughs> when you were going to get that shirt, I said we have a, we're going to get a real scoop here on Solcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got the scoop now yeah. i figure you're a dad so you probably enjoy a good dad joke yeah. now and then yeah um, <laughs> yeah I, I hear them hear them all and i, I make them all as well <laughs> um oh let's see and then this was given the breaking bad um uh store in albuquerque <laughs> oh <laughs> the box cutter yeah <laughs> they make these logo lego um uh, uh, souvenirs and this was a lego uh, box cutter. that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> let's see last thing i'll share with you and this was uh made from a friend and a and a fan um oh that's sweet <laughs> yeah so that's awesome figure. that's so cool and this Did, is what i see it says disfigure on the bottom <laughs> that was yeah, the uh, company yeah, <laughs> and then uh and then on the back if you read there it's oh the victor stare the Victor it's piercing stare. stare and two tone pistol. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty badass right there. Yeah, <laughs> and then it says uh, now equipped with even more piercing eyes, forty <laughs> percent more piercing. <laughs> 40 Damn, that's awesome. Uh, we just did a uh, Sawcast trivia night the other week, mm -hmm. and we were giving out as prizes um, some uh, kind of they're kind of like pops. So we had yeah, a Saul Goodman. Show and tell yeah, you can bring well them over. Them we had a, a Saul Goodman, a Huel. And oh, cool. a uh, what was the third one? I forget now. Oh yeah, and a yeah. Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved if we had the the Victor action figure. Oh man, yeah. I'll have to when they make more. I'll have to send one to you guys. Yeah, that would be incredible. Awesome. That's cool. That's well, cool. Uh, thank you again, and uh, appreciate the show and tell at the end. That was awesome. You're making yeah. me jealous. I want to get my own little. The fact they were able to gather those all so quickly tells me you must have a little Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul corner. I want to get one of those. crawl space where he keeps all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, in my office, and I, I functionally, people probably are like, what are you doing? You should box them or keep them. But I actually, I wear, I've been wearing them over mm -hmm. the summer. So, um, you know, so yeah, I kind of keep, I kind of keep it all together. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. awesome. 
Uh, well, thank you again. This was great. Um, anything you want to leave the listeners with? Any any place they should go to follow you? Anything you want to plug or anything? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm on Instagram at Jeremiah Bitsui, but um, yeah, I guess just you know, watch, check out Dark Winds. Watch this last, uh, of course, watch last uh, season. The rest of what's left with Veracall Saw. Um, shot over a year. I know a lot of. Uh, great intention and love went into it. And, um, you know, it's, it's a labor of love. I mean, it's hard saying goodbye to, to everybody. I think that's probably one thing that you'll hear from everybody is everybody was, you know, really grew close and, um, you know, to spend that much time with people and it's, you know, hard not to get attached. So mm-hmm. just know it came from a good place. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much and, uh, hope to talk to you again sometime. Yeah, thank you guys. Of course, really cool to meet you, man. Yeah, you as well. Thank you guys. I can't thank wait. Uh, I'll, uh, and I'll tune in and I'll watch more as well. Awesome. Oh, yeah, we'll send the link once this gets posted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Take care. All right. All Thanks, right. you guys. Bye. All right. So we have um, like 15 minutes right now. We're on yeah. the clock. But we wanted to do a quick post game for the, uh, for the interview. Which, yeah. like, first off, just that was so cool that we got to do that. Yeah. It, I've, I'm, I'm very happy for uh, Jeremiah that he got to speak with us. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. What, what do we want? To, we have 15 minutes here. What do we want to cover? First it's off, there was a joke that you were going to Okay. Make. Yeah. So yeah. there was a joke I wanted to make in the interview, but it's like in real life, if it were Adam, I would just interrupt him and say it. But this is royalty we were talking to. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to like, I was looking for the way in to say it and get a chance. But when he was talking about how Vince Gilligan would give all this freedom on set to like, experiment and try different yeah. things, I wanted to say, ah, so you go up to Vince and say, hey, how about when Gus comes at me with the box cutter, you know, I do like a ninja maneuver and like I stop him. Yeah. And that would have been funny on its own, but also a callback to him saying that ninja. he was into ninja yeah, movies. Yeah. yeah. So that would have And been just to illustrate, even though everyone knows we have good chemistry, uh, before Gil said what he wished the joke he could have made was, mm-hmm. I guessed it. Yeah. 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 I said I wanted to make a joke, and then Adam, he basically said exactly the joke yeah. I was going to make. Um, anything else? Well, the banter about the uh, um, crawl space, oh, yeah, that's going to yeah. be in there. Yeah. We wanted to make that joke to him. You'll see what we're talking about. Well, I guess you're watching this after the interview. Who knows? Uh, anything else in the interview itself? No. I mean, it was just really cool to talk to him. Yeah. I wish we had more time. Yeah, same. Hopefully, I mean, I would love to get him on again. I yeah. want, I want to see is he went through the Better Call Saul Breaking Bad film school. So, what's he gonna make? Oh um, well, yeah, that's what I was kind of alluding to. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple things that have come up since the episode aired. Okay. Since the last episode, so <laughs> this is pretty funny actually. So we were debating. Well, I was kind of telling you, like, when did that flash forward take place? This has been the talk of the town. All week. He's like, what flash forward? Yeah. <laughs> at, the end, <laughs> at the end of the episode. No, no, just, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on. Um, so, so you would think, you know, they're doing this flash forward. Everybody's going to, everyone watching is going to be wondering, when the hell does this take place? So, like, if they show you any dates, they must have really thought through whatever dates they're showing. Well, that's what we assumed. Right. Do you think it was a mistake? <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> there's a prominent shot. Of the license plate. Yeah. It says November yeah. 2005. Yeah. Okay. Later, when he goes to put the handicap thing up, it says 2008 or seven. I forget. Okay. Now, those have to be renewed every four years. So for me, the timeline's still lined up. Because if it's 2005. Yeah, they're within four years of each other. Exactly. And then uh, Tom Schnauss oh, no. had the tweet. <laughs> you know, I love the writers of this show more than I yeah. love anyone in the world. Uh, oh, oh, I see. That was a yeah, knock yeah. at me. But yeah, s- stop talking. Yeah, <laughs> just write. You know, because they keep spoiling things. I think I accidentally read a spoiler in the comments of our podcast today. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? And it wasn't even the thing. Is they're totally in their rights to write what they wrote because they said it was in a teaser. Yeah. Don't tease. Just just put out the show and don't say anything. Um, I didn't want this to turn into another Sorry, rant about all, spoilers. Yeah, that's all but I know how to do. He said, uh, uh, we think it takes place around 2007. Which would but, mean, which works. Wait, but, 
Yeah, yeah. It, it would just mean that Saul has plates that are expired. But as a man of the law, it, it just be. feels like a weird. It feels like it wasn't a choice. That feels like a mistake. Or just something they didn't really think about or care about. But they had to think I about the license well, plate. Well, here's they the had thing, to, though. Right? He never had enough tickets, enough stickers, you know, with the parking garage. That's true. Even though he knew it was the rule. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's totally out of character for him. Uh, I don't have too big of a problem with that. But I also agree that it doesn't sound intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I actually ha I have no problem with it. I just found it funny. That's all. Okay. Just that everybody is trying to triangulate what the date is. Yeah, yeah. They're like, there's a I, license plate. Like, oh, what about the handicap sticker? It turns out these people are thinking about it more than the writers. Yeah. yeah. It's not even the writers. It would be the well, Schnauzer, whoever puts all that. Whoever puts their stamp of approval on like that kind of stuff. Probably Jeremiah Bitsui. He yeah, it's, he it's the his plate. fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the main takeaway is that it's 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 once he settled into the role of Saul Goodman. But before he met Walter, what exact date it is just really doesn't matter. Yeah. What do you think about this? This is a, an idea that's been going around a lot in the Discord, and I've seen it on Reddit too. But you remember how uh, he says to Kim, "One day you're gonna brush your teeth. You're not gonna think about it mm -hmm. at all." What they flash forward to? That's what if she's like, "I don't brush my teeth in the morning," and then he's like, "We gotta break up right yeah. now." <laughs> um, it would have avoided a lot of heartbreak later. That's true. But uh, this flash forward, that's the first time he didn't think about it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, that was that my makes sense. That yeah. actually makes sense because they're showing his whole morning routine. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the th okay. Oh, I it would stop make for sense. A second, yeah. That is my that was my exact reaction. Oh, interesting. Uh, wait a minute. That was my exact reaction. Yeah, the, I mean, the reason I'm saying, oh, wait a minute, is. You would think if that was intentional, there would be a little bit more to to bite into. That, that like, there's no breadcrumbs leading there. That's just that's what I'm thinking. They're just showing us this date, and so we're not basing it off of clues in the show. We're basing it off of clues outside of the like. We're just trying to get in the writer's head. It's kind of like that. It's different from reading into what they're showing us versus reading into what they were thinking. It's like that would be a nice parallel, but I think there is, there's really nothing in the text of the show to tell you that. Yeah. And, and it actually doesn't align with the way I read that scene, which the way I read it is they are showing you who Jimmy turned into. Yeah. And so by this point, he's settled into the role. So this could be any day. It's not mm -hmm. any special day. It's that- But it is past the point where he doesn't think about it every day. Exactly. At some point, he fully became this version of Saul Goodman, right. and he's been doing this for a while, and they're showing us one slice. Yeah, and so in that sense, it doesn't matter if it's that first day or any others after it. Right. Uh, I think, I believe the intent of the writers was to show any of those days. I don't think it happened to be the first day. I don't think it's not the first day. I just don't think that's determined. I don't think right. it was in their heads. If you want that in your head cannon, you know, I'm not going to stop you. Yeah. No one's putting a cannon to your head. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. I got a couple more minutes here. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, um, there was something. Oh, so there was at least one person who didn't like that you thought Kim was turned on after. Uh, I can't control my reaction. <laughs> He said, <laughs> I said I was wrong. I they, can't. they kissed plenty of times. Yeah. Not after a, 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 a scam. So they don't only kiss after scams. Yeah, but this time they were, they were <laughs> lying together. And then they were going to lie together. Nice. No, but s forgive me. Like, come <laughs> on. That's not that unusual of a thing. Especially they're in the parking garage. It's dark. Yeah. When they kissed, Kim did that thing where her back leg kind of goes up in the air. You know what I'm talking about? Did that happen? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for all I know, the comment was meant in a totally innocuous way. Like, oh, that's not how I read it. But I read it in my head. Like, I don't know. Idiot. Most of these YouTube comments are pretty uh, uh, belligerent and yeah. aggressive. That's not true, actually. We would say this all the time. It's now, a small the, minority. Small minority. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the comments on the, the One Take podcast channel where we put the full Sawcast episodes 
Those are usually delightful. Yeah, much higher quality. I, I did, still wait, am afraid to read them, though. I did like um, when you were asking Jeremiah, you were like, you know, what, what do they think of the fans? Like, I felt like you were fishing for compliments. I was. I wanted him to say <laughs> they treat them with a lot of intelligence. Did he say that? I can't remember. Well, no, I kind of said it for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he agreed with me. He, it seemed like as soon as I said they, they trust the audience to pick up on, on what they're showing us rather than just put it out, rather than just explain it. And he was nodding a lot. So That's right. Okay. Are you sure it wasn't like a, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think he, he's one of us in terms of people who really love the show and really like to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, like it, it seems like it was much more than just a role, like a job for him. So. Right. I don't know. I don't want to turn this into here's the negative comments we got. And I want to respond to them. I love doing but that. For some reason, that's all that's coming to my mind. Right. But, but one person said, I, I wish you didn't mention that deadline article. I didn't know about that. But I didn't say what, what was, was the article? In, that was the one that reveals oh, the, yeah. the timing of Walter and Jesse's appearances. Um, but I, did, I didn't say yeah. when they show up. What's, yeah, I don't think he did anything wrong. At you, this point, the cat's out of the bag that they're showing up. I wish I didn't know that. I probably could have guessed it, but I didn't want to know. Yeah, that's uh, the only thing I could think of. Yeah, you can come in here. Are you recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're recording, uh -huh. yeah. This is like a little bonus episode. Uh, we, this is like our post game for the interview. I have to leave in like three minutes. Hey, love. But I want to just squeeze this, win squeeze right. this in. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the only thing I could think of is maybe he didn't know that Walt and Jesse were going to show up. Oh. In, in that case, like, I do feel bad. Yeah, but I if, mean. If you're, I mean, for that to be the case, that this person didn't know they were going to show I'm up. I'm amazed you made it this That long. would mean that yeah. this video is the first content they have consumed about Better Call Saul. It, like all it's season. probably the first time they ever signed into the internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, if that's true. Well, first of all, you brought it up, not me. But if that's true... Um, and I were you, I would feel a little bad. I would like feel apologetic Should about I it, but I no because okay. could, you couldn't have done differently. Like we, we were just at the point where we assumed everyone knew. We were yeah. very unhappy to find. I out. was mad. Yeah. I was mad about the deadline article, and so you decided you to know? ruin it for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> they say like the captain goes down with the ship. I'm taking the ship down. Yeah. Because I'm going... The captain so, wasn't feeling well one day, and so he decided to sink the ship. The ship is going down with the captain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the name I'm of this episode. I'm surprised I've never heard right? someone make a joke like that. I feel before. like I just invented a great take on this like classic idiot. You know, they say, oh, you should go down with the ship. No, no, no. The ship is going down with me. That's an, We don't name our Saul That sounds like episodes. something George Costanza would say. Should I call... This is the bonus episode. Yeah. Uh, Saul cast. The ship is going down with the captain. I like that. Although that implies that you're the captain, which uh, debatable. You, st I mean, you started Saulcast. Yeah, and truth, let's truth right now. <laughs> truth, truth, truth. <laughs> uh, I tried to start Saulcast during the series premiere of Better Call Saul. Yeah. I took meticulous notes. This was back in 2015. 14? Right. 15. 15. Uh, and I kept saying, yo, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. And you were like, nobody wants to hear people busy. talk about no stuff on the internet. Yeah. Me yeah, too yeah, busy. Yeah. yeah. You uh, really were too busy though. Yeah. Speaking of which I got to go. Um, but this was great. Now the whole reason we did this is because we need to say, uh, we have to do the ending for the interview. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so that really is why we turn the cameras on. Yeah. I'm just going to copy and paste this. It'll be the ending of the interview yeah. and the ending of this bonus episode. Yes. I think it should be the same listing on YouTube. Okay, it might be. Because we'll it's so short otherwise. I'm Gil. I'm Adam. And this, this is SawCast. Bonus, Bonus episode. Bonus.